Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's IIASA technical online event. The topic for today is unpacking the standards in the context of COVID-19. Our presenter today is the uh, deputy head of our technical department, Mr. Dirk Stratum. Before we begin, I would just like to go over the house rules. So if you have any questions, please direct it to our Q&A section where we will, um, we will have a dedicated Q&A um, portion of the presentation where we will address your questions. If we do not get a chance to address it during the presentation, we will send out a written um, answer sheet for all the questions that were posed during the event. Um, if you have any queries or if you, um, for, if you get locked out of the event, please send an email to regions at iiasa.org.za um, and I will allow you back into the event as the event will be closed after 10 minutes or so to um, keep safety as a, a, a priority here. Um, I'm now going to hand you over to Dirk Stradom, the deputy head. Good day, everyone. And thank you very much for joining today's session. I'm very excited to have you here. And to be very honest with you, quite a new experience for me, talking to you through a webinar and through my computer in a formal way. And this whole week I've been preparing for the session, so I really hope it goes well with there's be no glitches and that everything works out fine. Because to be honest with you, I do prefer standing in front of you on a stage and talking to you. It's much easier, you can see the audience and you can engage with them and you can see how people respond and you can adapt accordingly. So I really hope, because this is a technical session today, you don't fall asleep or you don't focus on something else on your computer and open a web browser and read the news and that you focus on me and that you listen to the content of the presentation today and I hope it's insightful. I don't think it's completely comprehensive in terms of there might be a lot more that we need to discuss, but we only have about an hour, hour and a half to get through this. So I focus on the core things that I think that internet auditors should be considering in light of COVID-19. And I hope you enjoy my presentation and that it's insightful. And I want to mention this to you. Um, if there's any technical issue, we've got a bit of a backup. Hopefully nothing goes wrong, but I'm not getting a stroke if I'm getting a freeze frame. So let's just bear with me and let's start. So I need to prepare you for the next slide. Um, from a social perspective, this might be a little bit scary. The picture that I'm going to show you, please don't run away. You won't get COVID-19, I promise you. Just want to get there. So this is a virtual handshake, I promise you. You can't get COVID-19 from this handshake. I just want to make you feel welcome. I think we've lost a little bit of personal touch in the world, but if this really makes you feel uncomfortable, I also got an elbow bump for you so that you can't get COVID-19 and I'm very certainly safe. So a little bit about myself. As um, Damishan introduced me, I'm the deputy head for the technical department at the IRA South Africa. I'm a very passionate internal auditor and I feel that there's a lot that internal auditing can add to the world and make a big difference within organizations and our clients. So I really want us to be passionate about what we're doing. And that's why I'm here today and having this conversation with you. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about COVID-19. I'm very certain all of you are well aware of the implications of COVID-19 and how it impacted on the, the world that we live in, the economy, politic, uh, politics, socioeconomic factors. But what I do want to ask you, though, is, is not going into too much detail about COVID-19. My question to, to you as the audience today is, have you applied your mind to COVID-19 from a perspective of an internal auditor? And uh, properly, if, what I mean by that is, is, have you thought about the implications of COVID-19 in terms of how it's going to affect you as an internal auditor? To be honest, I have, and you, the, the feeling that I'm getting sometimes is just a feeling of being overwhelmed when I start thinking about all the implications with COVID-19. It can become very overwhelming, this feeling, especially if you consider what you need to do within your organizations. But I wanna say, there's hope. We need to apply ourselves as internal auditors systematically and strategically. We need to prioritize and focus 
and critical of critical importance is using our international professional practices framework the IPPF use that and use the standards so that you've got formal guidance that can help you along the way prioritize what you need to do do it in line with the standards and help your organization to see this difficult time through and if we do it correctly we would really get out on the other side far better off than we were when we started so with that being said let's just get into the new slide i like to start with some positive thoughts because the world's a very negative place at this point in time so i really before we get into the technic the technicalities of the standards and into the boring part of the presentation i've chosen this uh, butterfly purposefully i think we all know what butterflies do they turn from caterpillars into beautiful butterflies and that's what i'm hoping what will what will happen to the world dr seuss got this quote it's not about what it is but about what it can become and on this specific um quote or on this point it's not just about internal auditing yes we need to think about internal auditing it's not about what internal auditing is today but the reality of what internal auditing can become but i want to take it one step further i want to say to you it's not about what the world is at this point in time it's about what the world can become it can become a better place if we apply our mind properly and we do things differently going forward and we don't revert back to the same old same old the other thing that i want to mention to you specifically is the ippf including the standards of it guide you as i've mentioned as an intern auditor especially in these times of business unusual we have an opportunity to redefine intern auditing going forward and that will only happen if we embrace our core principles and standards set out in the IPPF, especially, and I want to really underscore this, especially the need to be insightful, proactive, and future focused. I know this has been in the standards for quite some time. This, these are not new standards, they've been around for, for many years now. But the reality is, is, when you have a conversation, I don't think we've taken some of these elements that seriously up to date. We really need to apply ourselves about how we're going to become more insightful. How are we going to make our organizations better during these difficult times? And with these positive thoughts, I just want to leave you with one last quote, positive quote. John F. Kennedy said that change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. So, um, with that being said, let's look to the future and let's adapt and move on. So COVID-19, some key considerations for intern audit. The question here is, what do you think can an organization reasonably, reasonably expect from their respective intern audit function or from yourself, especially with reference to COVID-19 at this point in time? And I think if we we all intern auditors and we suppose now our standards and you very well know what you're doing within your organizations, your intern audit plan, and I'm very certain a lot of you are extremely busy at this point in time, adapting your intern audit plans and making certain that you're there to support your organization. It's not just the safe health and safety related risks, but all these other risks that are also impacting on your organization now, cyber related issues. Popia becoming more relevant because people are working remotely. The, all these risks that are introduced now, productivity, all of those measures that we need to consider. So what can organizations reasonably expect? And I think the answer is quite simple from my side. It's assurance, advice, and insight. This is not what I'm saying. I'm going to show you now. Those of you that know your IPPF, you will know exactly where I got that information from. But what I'm imploring you to do as an intern auditor is you need to think about how you're going to provide COVID-19 related assurance and advice and insight to your organizations or to your clients. And from that perspective, you need to really understand the difference also between the three elements of what we do. So on the next slide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start focusing first on the big picture. So we can't get into the detail. Yesterday is about the standards, but the standards are part of a bigger picture. And that bigger picture that I'm talking about is the IPPF. So talking about the IPPF, as you can see there, it's got a mission statement. It's got 
mandatory guidance elements, recommended guidance elements. But today we're going to focus on the mandatory guidance elements and of critical importance, obviously, the standards that underpin everything. And you'll see in the design of this IPPF, the standards are there at the bottom of the mandatory guidance as a foundational element. And that's why they're so critical. But you need to consider how everything fits together and you need to see the big picture. And the big picture starts with having a goal or a mission. Nothing in life, as I always say in my presentations, are achieved without having a goal or a mission. And hence, having a mission statement is so important. And what is Internal Audit's mission statement? That mission statement is to enhance and protect two elements. You need to make it better. You need to enhance and protect your organization's value by providing risk-based and objective assurance advice and insight. And with that being said, you could see that that simple answer came from a mission statement. So you need to give assurance that's risk-based. And obviously COVID-19 impacts on your organization's risks and overall on, a, on many levels within the organization. And accordingly, if you've got risk-based assurance, you need to include COVID-19 related matters in your assurance. You need to provide advice and insight. Okay, and then this is the mission statement. So it starts with a big picture of having a mission. Now we know what we need to achieve. And I want to remind you that this is what you, as if you are a professional internal auditor, this is not a, a nice to have. The standards talk to the mission statement and the mission statement is something that you must achieve. If your organization, organization feels that you're not enhancing and protecting the organizational value, you are not performing effectively. So with that word of caution, let's just get into the next slide and have a look at the core principles. Because as I always say, the core principles define who you are. And I'm not going to go through all of them in detail. There are 10 of them, but I specifically want to focus on the last four. And the reason I've highlighted the last four is I think in terms of the core principles, we know that they've been in existence for quite some time. We know them. But in this time of COVID-19, uncertainty, business unusual, the uncertain times, there are so many words going around and descriptions and in the media specifically. But from an internal audit perspective, what are the core principles that we need to focus on? And one of the, one of the things for me, it starts with communication as set out in the core principles. We need to be able to communicate effectively. And com effective communication is described in standards. We, there are a number of requirements for effective communication. One of those being timely communication. We need to communicate in a timely manner. And especially now, when things are happening so quickly, you might be operating on a set of regulations. Tomorrow, when your business wakes up, the regulations that guide that organization or your organization might have changed. There are new regulations applicable to your organization that you need to comply with. So things can change within minutes at this point in time. And that's the reality of the world that we live in. So the question is, how effectively do we communicate within our organizations? How effectively do we communicate about risks? How effectively do we communicate about control elements within the organization, all related to COVID-19, obviously, and the, the other risks associated with it. Then the other one that you know very well is risk-based assurance, just underscoring the need to be risk-based. So risk-based would require you to have revisited your internal audit plan lately. I'm very, I'm hopeful that most of you would have revisited your internal audit plan. Um, because that, that would be a requirement if you're going to provide risk-based assurance. And then the other element there that I want to touch on is being insightful, proactive, and future-focused, and promoting organizational improvement. Have we done that? And if we have not, what are we going to do about that? So those are the core principles. So as you can see, it's not just the standards that talks to being proactive and helping our organizations through these times of uncertainty. We've got the mission statement and the core principles. So the next one, obviously, that we're going to look at is the standards. And then just a quick memory refresher in terms of the standards. 
there are three types of standards and they are the attribute standards, the performance standards and the implementation standards. So when I'm going to unpack the, the standards today in light of COVID-19, the, the, the key elements that we need to focus on. I'm going to touch on each one of these standards and I hope that you know that there's no separate section of implementation standards, but with the implementation standards relate to both attribute and performance standards. So effectively what the implementation standard does, it tells you how to implement that specific attribute standard or performance standard in light of a consulting or assurance engagement. So you'll see a little bit later on, some of these implementation standards have an A or a C, and that means that it's an implementation standard, but you'll see those examples when we get there. So before I get into unpacking the standards, there's one more thing that I want to discuss. And that's about our ability to focus both internally and externally. So yes, we're going to unpack the standards today. And we're talking about COVID-19, and we're talking about COVID-19 within our organizations, and how we're going to render our internal audit services, how we're going to help our organization through these times of uncertainty, and what are our responsibilities towards our organizations. But the reality is also, COVID-19 doesn't only impact on our organization, it impacts on us directly, on our internal audit departments, and on us as human beings, and on us as internal auditors. So my point here is I want us to do a bit of an exercise where we focus internally, not that I'm saying you are robots with a left hand picture, but you get the, you get the picture. I just want you to focus internally and then looking outward using the binoculars. So looking at our organization. So unpacking this a little bit, I've applied my mind and the way that I've applied my mind and the examples that I've used here is not necessarily only this that you need to think about. You might need to apply your mind specific to your own entity and organization, your own internal order department, but I want to just get your thought processes going on the next slide. So when I talk about an internal focus, what I talk about is business continuity from a perspective of an internal audit function continuing to deliver on its internal audit plan and promoting organizational improvement. Because we, we are very good at consulting our own, within our organizations. We can consult and we can provide assurance to our clients and to our organization, but how are we managing ourselves? Do we as an internal audit department have a business continuity plan? To my shock, I must admit, um, I've learned that during this lockdown, there were internal auditors that were at home, that couldn't continue with executing on the internal audit plan. They had no business continuity to enable them to continue conducting the internal audits off site. So that was a real concern for me. And that made me to wonder, you know, how well are we doing as internal auditors? when it comes to our own, our own house. So obviously we need to have business continuity plans. We need to protect and safeguard our internal audit staff and our resources from COVID-19 and related risks. So have you thought about physical client engagements? If the lockdowns are being lifted and you need to go to clients or you need to go to departments within your organization, have you thought about how you need to rewrite your internal audit manual to make certain that you've got safeguards in place. Not safeguards to protect your own staff only, but also to protect the, your auditees that you're going to engage with. And then the other element that you need to think of is the other related risks. So we are all working remotely at this point in time, but obviously that introduces a, a number of cyber related risks. So have you thought about how you protecting your, um, your resources, your data, when you work remotely. And then the last point there on an internal focus, which is of critical importance to me personally, is revisiting your internal audit functions, internal governance, risk management and control frameworks in light of COVID-19. Have you thought about updating your internal audit charter, revisiting your internal audit manual and methodology? Have you 
apply it your mind to what you need to do from a governance perspective, specifically internal governance. Sometimes I shockingly learn that some internal audit functions don't even have their own internal audit risk function risk registers. So focusing on the risks for the internal audit department, but we expect our organization to have a risk register. Obviously you need to have your own risk register and that risk register must also be updated. What happens if all your stuff um, get quite ill? and they've taken ill and you cannot continue and have thought about those processes. And then I'm moving on to the external focus. Have you thought about delivering objective risk-based assurance in COVID-19 related matters? I'm certain a lot of people and a lot of internal auditors are focusing on this specifically, the operational control reviews, safety health and environmental audits, focusing on COVID-19, et cetera. And we're going to unpack that in more detail when we get to the standards relating to these elements providing relevant and timely COVID-19 related advice. Are we in a position to provide COVID-19 related advice to our organizations? If you keep yourself abreast of developments and you bring in the experts, yes, we are. So seeing the big picture, and this is very important for me. So based on the engagements that we performed, the environmental scanning that we're doing for, for our organizations and research that we conduct, can you provide your organization with unique and valuable COVID-19 related insights that's of specific relevance to your organization? And I know that sounds like a long-winded sentence there, but before I move on, I want, I want to just unpack this a little bit. There is a lot of COVID-19 related advice and news in the world today. That's a reality. You can switch on your television, you can go into the newspapers, there are many websites that provide guidance. But the reality is that each organization will have quite a unique response. In some organizations, the number of employees that will contract the disease will be more. It will impact on their business differently. If you are a fast moving consumer good entity, it might impact you differently as opposed to financial industry. So our responses will be different. How we engage and react and how we set ourselves up will be unique from one organization to another organization. It might even be unique from one department to another department within an organization. The reality is, is internal audit are one of the few departments that get to engage on all the different levels within the organization. And I think we need to take that insight that we gain when we conduct these COVID-19 related assurance reviews, consulting services at different levels within the organization, maybe from a top executive level, right down to operations. And we need to combine that view to get to a unique big picture view, COVID-19, if you want to call that, call it that, COVID-19 big picture view for your organization. And that's where the value of internal audit comes in. Then you go to your audit committee chair, you go to your board, you go to senior management, and you can share these unique COVID-19 related insights, organizational insights with them, so that you can develop and adapt your strategy that's unique to your organization, so that you can have business continuity going forward. Okay, and with that being said, I now want to move into the, the standards. So you'll see, I've used a picture here specifically on this slide of chess pieces. And there's the reason I've used the chess pieces. What I want to say to you today is that it's interesting for me um, being from a technical department and engaging with internal auditors and people entering the internal audit space. And they sometimes look at me and say, Jeez, you only have like 25, I think I'm, I can give you, it's 25 pages of internal audit standards. How can internal audit activities across the globe in all these different sectors, you know, use a set of standards that are only 25 pages long. You can go into the accounting standards and you can look at how technical accounting standards are and very prescriptive sometimes. Also an application of a mind, but very technical. And a lot of the times the internal audit standards require interpretation and they sometimes purposefully quite broad to allow for interpretation. So I want to use an analogy where I relate it to chess. If you think about chess, chess pieces only have a set, each piece 
there are rules how you can move each piece and you can only move it in that manner. However, if you think about chess strategies and openings, so let's think about um, the different types of openings, your middle games, end games. There are a vast number of um, different plays that you can do in chess, different tactics and strategies that you can employ. And all of these strategies are different and tactics are different. But if you think about it, the, the rules to move the pieces are the same. And the board that you have in front of you is the same. But there are so many variations in the play. And the same holds for me for the IPPF and specifically the standards. Yes, we've got one set of standards. You can uh, relate that to the rules of moving your chess pieces. But setting your strategy, what, what those rules or what the standards allow you to do is to be adaptable to develop different strategies, to, de to develop different tactics to meet the objective of your organization. And that's to add value and enhance and protect that value. So we need to apply our mind carefully to our standards. It's not just about reading the standards. It's actually about consuming the standards. You have to read it. And then you take the standards to your unique internal audit department with your unique risk register and governance framework, and you apply it. And you develop strategies, especially in these times where the world is so uncertain. And those strategies that you develop can be adaptable. It's like a game of chess. You need to see how, you, how the strategy pans out, but maybe you need to revisit it. But you need to go back to the standards because the standards are the rules about how you can move your pieces. And that's why the standards are of critical importance to me. And then just a few things that I want to remind you about is the standards, the standards are mandatory guidance elements. So if you are a professional internal auditor, conforming to the standards is a must. You must conform to the standards. The standards are applicable to both individual internal auditors and to internal audit functions. When you read your standards, Pay attention to when it talks to internal audit activities or when it talks to the CAE specifically or to the internal audit staff. But the standards are relevant to both the department and the individuals in the department. Conforming to the standards in context of an internal and external focus. So remember what I said, we are focusing on our organization, but we also need to focus on the department itself. And then there's one set of standards with many variations in the application, just like a chess game. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time that we now get into the standards and start unpacking them. So again, as I said, I've chosen pictures quite specifically for this presentation. I just want to remind you Although in today's presentation, I'm going to highlight some of the standards, it doesn't mean the other standards that I haven't touched on are not important. All the standards are important. And you need to apply your mind in, this, in these times of uncertainty during COVID-19 to all the standards. But I just want to highlight in today's presentation key standards that I think that are of critical importance to you. Um, and then the last thing, we're going to unpack these standards in terms of each standard type. So I'm going to start with the attribute standards. But talking to the picture, I think we all can agree that we are quite on a curvy road ahead, windy road, whatever you want to call it. But the road ahead is a little bit uncertain and we're not knowing where, we can, where we're going. But we need to make plans and we need to use our strategies to, de to develop some detours. We might not be using a car anymore or because the road is curvy, we might decide to take a complete detour. And to be honest with you, I think in a, in a large, to a large extent, that's exactly what happened in the world today. That's why we are in a lockdown, because of a detour that we've taken. But it doesn't mean because we are on a detour that we should not respond. It just requires a different tactic. Okay. So let's start unpacking the standards and the, the, let's get to the heart of today's presentation. So the first one that I want to focus on is the first attribute standard, purpose, authority and responsibility. And you might be saying, but Dirk, um, 
We all know the purpose, authority, and responsibility. We, we've got an internal order charter. Our internal order charter has been updated and, and we're very comfortable. But I want to ask you the question, does your charter adequately address the need for your internal audit function to provide organizational insight? If you are a CAE and, and attending the session today, or if you are an internal auditor and you engage with your CAE or with your audit committee as well, my question to you is, is have you discussed the need for internal audit to, be pro to provide organizational insight? Because we are very good at doing certain things. We are very good at providing assurance and consulting services. But this third role, the role of insight, in many places are still lagging. And what are you doing about it? And I think one of the places where we need to start, because the internal order charter sets out our purpose, authority, and responsibility, one of our purposes is to provide organizational insight. And we need to make certain that we've addressed this element, especially now. Because I can tell you, organizations, if you are going to survive through these uncertain times, the need for internal order to step up into that insight space is now. And for you to be able to do that, you need your internal order charter to give you the authority to do that. Hence, please go and have a look at your charter. So I've got a bit of a uh, statement there where I just say, considering the current state of business and the level of uncertainty, there's definitely a need for internal order to provide COVID-19 related insights that are specific to your respective organization. So the first attribute standard 1000, you need to have a look at. And obviously with that being said, as I pointed out, please note, I'm not saying the other attribute standards or performance standards that I'm not touching on are not important. You need to apply your mind to them as well. It's just that for the benefit of today, I want to focus on these ones. The next one, you might say it goes without saying. I mean, direct interaction with the board is kind of expected, but you'll be surprised. We sometimes believe that we have direct access to the board, but when you want to engage with your audit committee chair, which is supposed to be a, a, board, um, a, a, a board member, they're not always that accessible. Have you ascertained? how easy it is, how quickly and effectively you can communicate with the board. Remember that core principle about communi um, communicating effectively. Effective communication is also timely communication. If you need to engage with your board, with your audit committee chair, how readily are they available to engage with you as the internal auditor? So you must communicate and interact directly with the board. You know that. But although this goes without saying, as I said, um, it's necessary to ensure that internal audit has direct interaction with the board in this time of uncertainty. Just make certain that your own house is in order in this regard. The next one, triple one two, chief audit executive roles beyond internal auditing. So I almost want to say internal audit roles beyond internal auditing. I'm quite certain if you apply yourself to the current economic environment and we all know the economic pressures that organizations are in there are going to be extreme pressures on organizational resources going forward and we're going to we we've been talking in internal audit circles about doing more with less i think that's a, a long time it's been a reality for internal auditors for quite some time but if we thought it was reality before, it's even going to be worse going forward. So what might happen, especially now with COVID-19, risk issues, business continuity planning being revisited by organizations, making plans, making certain that the adhere to the regulations, compliance reviews are conducted, et cetera. There's going to be a lot of pressure on internal audits to assist organizations beyond your normal scope of, you know, beyond your internal audit plan. They might look to the CAE and say, look, we need you to step up, help us get our risk registers in order for COVID-19. You need to, to assist us with our um, uh, ethics, organizational ethics. You know, um, some organizations might be very aggressive economically because they need to continue conducting their business. But then do they take uh, unnecessary risk? Do they expose their staff to unnecessary risk, COVID-19 related risks? 
And what are the ethical scenarios behind that? So they might want you to step up as an ethics officer if you're CAE in that specific environment. But beyond that, I think the reality is, is just that organizational resources are going to be so constrained that for most internal audit functions, it might become a reality that you're going to do work beyond the normal scope of internal auditing. And what I want to ask you is that you need to prepare yourselves for such additional roles and have a look at this specific standard. I'm not going to unpack the whole standard now and tell you the interpretation. The standards are on the website, but I want you to focus on standard 1212, especially in these times of COVID-19. You need to prepare yourselves because the standards and the implementation guidance on the specific standard is very clear about the safeguards that you need to put in place and to maintain your independence and objectivity. Because if you've done this, you need to make certain that if you've conducted these roles beyond the normal scope of internal auditing, that you've got the safeguards in place, that you can go back later and provide assurance where you need to provide assurance or that your organization is ready to outsource some of those assurance engagements to other service providers. But you need to have these discussions with your audit committee chair, senior management and the board. Very important that you have these conversations with them when you are taking on these roles as well. Okay. Then one of the attribute standards, when I thought about the standards and unpacking them in context of COVID-19, that I think is of crucial importance. And I had a conversation yesterday with a uh, chief audit executive in the financial industry. And um, we were talking about the specific standard and the standards proficiency and due professional care. And we need to apply them out carefully. I'm going to, I quote the standard here, yeah, internal auditors must possess the knowledge, skills, and other competencies needed to perform the individual responsibilities. The internal audit activity collectively must possess or obtain the knowledge, skills, and other competencies needed to perform its responsibilities. So, as I said, most organizations will look to internal audit, especially from a compliance, regulatory compliance perspective, to give assurance that their organization is complying to the regulations that's been set out for their entity. However, whether it relates to safety, health and environmental matters or any other COVID-19 related matter, we need to make certain when we take on these roles that we possess the knowledge and skill and competencies, not necessarily individually. You might have a number of internal auditors within your internal audit activity that possess different skills and knowledge, but collectively your internal audit activity must have those knowledge, um, skills, knowledge and competencies to perform the overall responsibility. Very important that you revisit the standard at this point in time because your organization will come to you to help them. So the question I'm asking of every attendee today is have you thought about what competencies and skills you currently have in light of COVID-19? Where do you fall short and where do you need to gain knowledge on how, how you, what is your strategy in getting that? Are you going to outsource it? Are you going to go on training? What is the process? But you need to apply your mind. So I'm asking that you assess the level of skills and competencies required by your staff and determine your ability to service your organization's COVID-19 assurance, consulting and insight needs. And again, I get back to three levels. It's not just about having the knowledge and skills to conduct assurance engagement. It's about having the knowledge and skills and competencies to conduct an assurance engagement to consult and to give organizational insight. Because the nature of work standard, which we're going to touch on a little bit later, 2100, touches on all three of those elements. Okay, and remember when I talked about unpacking the standards, I mentioned to you that we're also going to look at the implementation standards. So for this specific uh, attribute standard, which is um, attribute standard 1210, which is the proficiency standard, there are two implementation standards that I want you to focus on. And that's 1210A1, which means it's uh, assurance engagement 
implementation standard and 1210C1, which means it's a consulting implementation standard. So let's just focus on those too quickly. You must obtain competent advice and assistance if internal auditors lack the knowledge, skills, or other competencies needed to perform all or part of the engagement. And the consulting one is, is you must decline consulting engagements or obtain competent advice and assistance if internal auditors lack the knowledge, skills, or other competencies to perform all or part of the engagement. So I just wanted to highlight that for you as well. But you need to go through, uh, I would really advise all the attendees today, go back, have a look at standard 1200. It's of critical importance. And then moving on to the next standard. So I've dealt with the attribute standards now, and I want to move into so the attribute standards, obviously defining our attributes, what we should look like. Um, now I want to get into the doing part. So this, this focus is more on the performance and how we're going to do things going forward. And the first standard there that we need to look at, what stood out for me was managing the internal audit activity. So talking about managing the internal audit activity, the interpretation of the standard states that an internal audit function is effectively managed when it considers trends and emerging issues that impact the organization. And I'm certain it goes without saying that COVID-19 is an emerging issue that impacts on your organization. So if I'm going to, for an example, conduct a quality assurance review on your internal audit activity, and I cannot see, although I doubt that there will be any internal or internal audit activity that haven't applied in mind to COVID-19, but if I cannot see that you consider the trend or emerging issues, and not only COVID-19 related issues, the increased cyber related risk, working remotely, for an example, PPIA, all of these other emerging issues now. If you haven't considered that in your managing internal audit activity, then you will be considered to be, and this is a horrible way of saying it, but you will be considered to be ineffective. So you need to be able to prove that you've applied your mind, that you've given appropriate consideration to COVID-19, all the other related risks within your internal audit activity or internal audit function itself and within your respective organization. So it's going to be twofold. Have you considered it with an internal focus and have you considered it with an external focus? Moving on to the next performance standard here. It's a planning one. So this is also of critical importance. I really think, and I had the same conversation that I had with the CAE from the financial sector yesterday. Um, we talked about the, the due professional care and we also talked about planning. And the question was asked, is having an annual plan, you know, annual risk-based plan sufficient in these times? And I would have loved, it. this is where, what I said in the beginning, having an audience in front of you, I would have loved to see your response to my question now. Because I'm certain most people will agree that having an annual, uh, annual risk-based internal audit plan is not sufficient, especially now. You do not know what is going to happen tomorrow in terms of the regulations. The world is so uncertain at this point in time. So you need to consider the impact of COVID-19 and your organization's goals, and you need to revisit your IA risk-based plan I'm asking you to review your plan and you need to consider input from senior management and the board and reviewing this plan must be on a regular basis and you need to make adjustments. There might be a need now to do quarterly internal audit plans. It might be even less, it might be on an ongoing basis where you revisit, readjust, and have continuous interaction with your audit committee chair and the audit committee might meet more frequently so that they can review and adjust the plan. But it's of critical importance that we focus on the things that are relevant to the organization and that are a priority item. Okay. Very, very important this point. Then the next standard, policies and procedures. 
I think this is an easy one, but saying that it's easy, it requires a lot of time and dedication to actually go and do it. But what I'm asking, in light of COVID-19, have you revisited your own department's policies and procedures? You should review them and you need to update them to ensure that COVID-19 related matters are appropriately addressed. So this is standard 2040-2040. And you need to, you need to revisit your own department's policies and procedures. If I'm going to look at your policy and procedure manual or your internal audit manual, whatever you call it, and I cannot see that you've allowed for safety and health factors for COVID-19, like physical contact with auditees, etc. But you haven't adjusted your internal audit manual or procedures for remote work requirements, protecting data, etc. If you haven't done that, it means you are not conforming to the standards. It's of critical importance that you go back and review internal audit manual and you adjust accordingly. Then we're almost, almost there, but the next one is coordination and reliance. So this was a very important standard. When I sat down and I applied my mind about what are the standards that internal auditors really need to think about in these times? Obviously, you need to think about a lot of standards, and all of them, as I said, but the key ones. And I thought about coordination and reliance, or as a lot of us know, combined assurance. And I think the reality is, is we all know that we're in a time of severe resource constraints, economic pressure, and there's going to be a need to become very agile in what we do. Internal auditors will need to be agile. Other departments, the risk management department will need to be, become more agile. Your ethics officers, line management, everyone. Agility is the key to survive these times. But what does that mean? It means that we should work together. I think from an assurance provider perspective especially, there's always this conversation that we have about the internal auditor, external auditor interaction and combined assurance and you know the old arguments and combined having effective combined assurance approaches that really work. But now, and I want to implore you, now more than ever, there's a need for you to work with other assurance providers across all three lines of defense. You may call it five lines of assurance, five lines or three lines of assurance, three lines of defense, I don't care what you call it, but we need to work together across these lines. Because that's the only way that we can, in a cost-effective manner, address all the priority risks but face our organization and address all these COVID-19 related issues without duplicating, without having a duplication of effort. So I think it's reasonable to be expected that across all three lines of defense, there will be responsibilities for monitoring compliance of COVID-19 related policies and procedures. Your compliance department will definitely be involved if you have one with monitoring compliance with the regulations set out by government. Internal audit will be involved in that space. Risk management will be involved. External auditors will be looking at this going forward. So you really need to have a set strategy. If I can advise you, it might not be the best um, for everyone, but my advice would be to have a meeting, online meeting, get all the assurance providers that's going to be involved in these COVID-19 related matters in one room. Get them in one room, a virtual room, and have these discussions. Talk about a combined and integrated audit approach going forward to make certain that you can offer the best value to your organization. So, and the individual here, there is, it's not the internal audit department per se only. I'm talking to specific individuals. I'm talking to those in leadership positions. And I'm talking to CAEs here. You need to take the reign. You need to, you need to take charge of this. You need to coordinate the combined assurance approach within your organization. If it hasn't been done within your organization yet, I'm imploring CAEs to take charge of this. You need to engage with everyone. It's crucial, especially to provide appropriate assurance coverage without having an unnecessary duplication of efforts. And with that being said, I'm going to step off the standard. 
but I'm imploring you, this is a very important standard. And then the next standard is a communication standard. So this relates back to, you remember um, talking about being insightful, proactive and future focused under the core principles and communicating effectively. So standard 2060 is a reporting standard. It talks about reporting to senior management in the board. And hence it also talks about communication. And what the standard says, now I wanna go through the standard and, and I, I want to read it to you. The CAE must report periodically and I would say now more often than periodically, quite regular to senior management and the board on the internal audit activities, purpose, authority and responsibility and performance relative to its plan and on its conformance with the code of ethics and the standards. But listen to the last part of the standard and this I really want you to focus on. Your reporting must, it must include significant risk and control issues and i'm certain we are facing a number of significant risk and control issues that we were not prepared for a few months ago including fraud risks governance issues and other matters re that require the attention of senior management and of the board it, the old wording used to say needed or requested by it says, this time it says, that require the attention of senior management and the board. If you believe as an internal auditor that your organization is missing something, that they're not paying attention to something, you do not need to wait on them that they call upon you. It's not them calling upon you to react. You need to be proactive. This is the standard that supports you to become proactive to communicate effectively. You can use the standard and you can raise the issue all the way to the board if senior management doesn't listen to you. But you need to speak up. This is the time to speak up and to share our insights. Okay, that being said, I'm going to move off the specific standard. So the next standard, is the nature of work one and i've applied my mind i don't know how well everyone knows this specific standard it's broken down into the three elements which we'll get into now governance risk and control but what the standard says is internal audit must and it uses the word i want to highlight the word must be must evaluate and contribute to the improvement of organizations governance risk management and control processes and then it continues to say systematic discipline and risk-based approach. But what it says is internal audit's credibility and value are enhanced when auditors are proactive and the evaluations offer new insights and consider future impact. And that's an important part for me on this specific standard. So of critical importance here is that in light of business unusual, and the general level of uncertainty in the market. The need for internal order to be proactive, offer new insights and to consider future impacts becomes elevated in this context of COVID-19. I've got a suspicion, and I might be wrong, but I've got a suspicion that we're going to be called on to do a lot of assurance-related work on control environments. So your board will call on you to provide assurance on a lot of control environments, specifically relating to COVID-19. However, at the same time, I wanna ask you if you thought about the, the two other elements that we're going to get into now specifically. And that is standard 2110, 2120, and 2130. So the nature of work for internal auditors are broken down into three elements governance, risk management, and control. And of critical importance for the attendees to note is that you cannot only provide internal audit related work on one of these elements. You cannot only review control environments. There's an expectation, a conformance requirement by the standards that within an organization for you to add value, you should focus on all three of these levels. And that is governance, risk management and control so i'm saying here your departments need to give careful consideration to each one of these standards and the corresponding implementation standards 
you need to go and have a look. There's a lot of detail in the implementation standards for these um, specific standards. So you need to ensure that your internal audit functions nature of work appropriately addresses your COVID-19 related matters within your organization. And you need to focus on governance, risk management, and the control level. So a simple example, talking about the governance, risk management, and control level for an internal audit function would be, you would be called upon to do compliance reviews to make certain that your organization adhere to the regulations that were set up by government. So that's a control type of review. At the same time, management or the board might also want to know that the risk um, department responded and that, they've up, that they are keeping the risk registers up to date and that they've thought about all the new risks and that they're doing this regularly, that it's not a bottom, uh, a top drawer exercise, the risk management of an organization. So you might be called on to review the risk management um, processes of an organization. But have you thought about the need to also provide governance related services in light of COVID-19? And what do I mean by that? What is the organization's culture with reference to COVID-19? Is and you know your own organizations, did we have a culture where we um, motivate people to work hard and come to work even if they're sick? I know people won't do that now going forward, but maybe that was an organizational culture where people, you know, were motivated, so motivated to show that they are hard workers, but they didn't think about the consequences of going to work sick and then making other people sick at work as well. So you need to think about the ethics of your organization, your decision-making structures, the culture that the organization has set, and how you manage productivity. Are you going to whip people? Are you going to implement um, control mechanisms to ensure that if people are working remotely, that they are productive? But that those measures that you put in place are so invasive that you might be intruding into people's personal space and into their privacy. And what are the ethics behind those concepts? So you really need to apply yourself to the governance frameworks. And there's a specific governance element, understand it 2130, um, I'm lying, sorry, under 2110, under the governance um, standard, that you need to, to focus on. And that's the need to review the IT governance environment of an organization. So that the, the IT governance support the organization in achieving its strategic objectives. And that is of critical importance because I'm telling you, not only has COVID-19 changed the way that we're doing things and placed a lot of pressure, economic pressure on, on our organizations, but from a technology perspective, your organization had to have need to evolve quite quickly. But now what happens is you evolve technologically, but have you thought about adapting and revisiting your IT governance frameworks? And was there a careful thought applied to the governance frameworks in, in that manner? So I want internal auditors to think about these things and to step up in that space as well. And you need to go back to organizations and advise on that. With that being said, I'm now moving on this long-winded standard of nature of work, and I'm going into the next one, and that is overall opinions, and this is the last one that we'll be unpacking for today. So overall opinions, in my mind, if internal audits are doing the right things and they're in the space that they should be, you would be called upon to provide overall opinions, and I just want to draw your attention to this specific standard as well, standard 2450. And I believe that there will be an expectation that internal audit functions will need to provide the board and senior management with an overall opinion on COVID-19 related matters within the organization. And when you're going to provide that overall opinion on COVID-19 related matters within your organization, please go to the standard and use the standard to guide you. Remember the chess game, the rules of moving the pieces are set. The standard are set, you cannot change the standard, but how you apply these standards to develop a strategy to help your organization through these uncertain times is up to you. And on that point, I'm going to 
move out of the standards now and unpacking the standards and I'm going to open up the floor a little bit to questions. So we will move into the Q&A session. As Tamishan pointed out in the beginning of his presentation, we will field a few questions, but I just want to give a reassurance to all the attendees today. But if we didn't get your question, we will work through the questions, depending on how many questions there are. Um, we will publish the list of questions and with formal responses and we'll send that back out to all the attendees as well that attend them today and it will go online. But with no further ado, let's just get into some of the questions that you might have. So you are welcome. So I'm going to just have a look at the first few. If inter-audit functions are meant they charter to incorporate the insight principle, Will they be required to also report on it as required for consulting projects? So I think the important thing to know about insight is you gain that insight whilst you are conducting your existing engagements. So whether you perform assurance or consulting engagements, what enables us to give that insight is firstly to be passionate. There is a requirement to be passionate about your entity because you need to research. You need to know the sector that you work in. So you need to know the environment that surrounds your organization. And you need to be passionate about your organization. And then it requires another element. It requires that you actually don't rush through your internal audit plan. Move from one engagement to the next engagement. May that be from a consulting engagement to an assurance engagement or assurance engagement to another assurance engagement. What we need to do is we need to take all the engagements that we perform, step away, put them in front of us, all the results across the different departments and see where there are transversal areas of concern or where do we see trends. You might have audited an HR department, the finance department. You might have audited a branch in one geographical area and in another geographical area. And you might see there are geographical trends. There are cross-departmental trends. There are um, sectoral specific trends. But what you need to do is you need to put these trends together. You need to get to this picture. Because this is why I'm saying internal auditors are uniquely positioned. Who else get an opportunity to get a picture of all the little departments, all the different regions, and put that picture together in light of the sector as well? And then providing your management team and your board with that insight that you gain. And that insight, remember, the standards talk about communication. The standards do not talk about reporting per se. They say you need to communicate effectively. And sometimes I do talk to reporting as well. But the requirement of insight is communicating your insight. That may be verbal, it may, may be written, it may be formal, it may be informal, but the requirement is, is that you communicate this insight effectively. So in my mind, especially thinking about the uncertainty that we're facing now and how quickly things change, if you're going to wait for formal engagement all the time to communicate formally, you might not be communicating that effectively. You might have a lot more informal engagement happening with your senior management teams and with the board and your audit committee chair. You might touch base more frequently with your audit committee chair, although that may be informal. And that will give you an opportunity to share that insight. So the next question that I'm going to deal with, has internal audit recovery processes been documented and captured in business continuity plans of organizations? as internal audit is still part of organization. Does internal audit have a seat in the organizational COVID-19 committee? I think it's a question and a statement. I fully agree with that statement. You need to ask yourself a question. Do you have a seat at the COVID-19 committee table? And if you don't, why? And that means that you might not have done um, the, the necessary things to showcase that you can add that value, but you need a seat at the table. You need to sit at the table. And as I've mentioned, you need to have your own BCPs for your own departments. You need to have your own risk registers. You need to revisit these risk registers and your own business continuity planning. I read an article a long time ago um, in Harvard Business Review about a CA, or a head of internal audit that talked about how he manages his internal audit activity. 
and he prepared an integrated report for his own department. Similar to the integrated report that the company prepared for their shareholders and stakeholders, so that he can show his stakeholders, internal audit stakeholders, how they're using the resources and adding value through the process. So that's something to think about. Okay. So the next question there is fraud risk has been heightened during this time of COVID due to, and then I can't see, uh, working remotely. So obviously we know people are working remotely and there's emergency procurement processes that people need to follow so that they can justify that they're following emergency procurement processes. The question is what role can internal audit play here from a consulting and advice perspective? I think if you, if you make certain that your internal audit plan is risk-based, that will mean that your organization's risk exposure has changed quite dramatically during recent times. And as long as you conduct risk-based planning you should be addressing all of these concerns and as i as i pointed out an annual internal audit plan will not be sufficient during these times you will need to revisit your internal audit plan more frequently currently okay then the other point that i just want to uh, have a look at here Question here, stakeholders will be expecting real-time assurance on a timely basis. Any advice on streamlining the cumbersome audit lifecycle in order to respond in a timely basis? To be honest, and this is just my opinion as an individual, I can't say that it's the Institute's view, but the reality is, is we need to rethink how we're doing things. If we're going to continue auditing, following a systematic approach that we used to follow, it might be a little bit cumbersome and we might not get to the end result in a timely manner. I talked about integrated auditing approaches, not just combined assurance, combined assurance is very important, but also an integrated audit approach where you don't necessarily audit one department and you start and finish at the end of the process, but you audit everything that that process touches across multiple departments and you involve many different assurance providers in that engagement so you work across different levels so that you can get to an end result quicker but we need to rethink how we're doing things we need to work smarter whilst we work harder okay then i'm going to go to the next question okay and then there's a, a comment here that much of our audit plan in response to COVID 19 is leaning to its consulting work as opposed to assurance is this still aligned to the expectation of the standards? Majority of the plan should provide assurance views versus consulting views. To be honest with you, I think there's a trend that we provide um, usually more assurance related work than consulting work, but you need to consider the unique con or contextualize it to your specific organization. It doesn't help that you want to provide assurance related services, but there's nothing to that so for an example your COVID-19 related um, policies and procedures within your organization are not implemented yet management had, hasn't gotten to that point so in terms of adequacy and effectiveness of those controls that you're looking at you already know that they are not adequate so if they're inadequate you obviously wouldn't go and test them so you're not going to go through the whole process of providing assurance on that because they're inadequate so where they are in COVID-19 related inadequacies you will need to focus on consulting engagements in your organization to help your management team to get those processes in place and then you can move to the assurance phase where you give assurance on those control mechanisms that they've put into place there would be an expectation from my side. I really think internal auditors are going to be required to step up in a compliance review aspect as well, where you need to review the compliance to these COVID-19 related um, policies and procedures within your organization to make certain that your organization adhere to the lockdown regulations. That being said, you need to consider the adequacy. If it's inadequate, yes, you might go down the consulting path and then obviously you provide assurance. A word of caution, please have a look at the standards when you do consulting work the implementation standard is very clear on consulting work that you do not take ownership of the work that management takes ownership of the work 
on, on a consulting basis. So the responsibility for or the ownership is always of management, not internal audit. Otherwise, your independence and objectivity will be impacted on. I'm going to take another few questions. I mean, I'm going to close the session there and the rest we will respond to. Okay, uh, question here, will the implementation standards be reviewed to include organizational insight standards as assurance and consulting services are covered? Will insight implementation standard be introduced? To be honest, I don't know. It might be an interesting conversation because the standards are going to be reviewed um, in the near future. They've started that process at the global level, taking the standards under review again. And that might be a worthy topic to discuss when we, we go down there. And I'm just going to be, can everyone hear me? I just got a notification that I might have a sound problem. Okay, so let's just see. Sorry for this. Can you, can everyone hear me now? Um, Damashin, if you can just give me an indication if I'm audible to the, to the attendees. Okay. Can, can anyone hear me? Uh, Tamishin, can you just indicate to me that you can hear me, please? Okay. Okay, 100%, I can see you can all hear me. Thank you very much. I just had a look at the chat line quickly. I got a notification from one of um, internally that my sound's off. I'm happy to hear that it's back on. Uh, just getting into the Q&A. So the rest of the questions will send a formal response to you and we'll publish all of those questions that was asked today in the session. If you still want to ask a question, you're welcome to because all of these questions we will have a look at after this presentation as well and we will respond to it formally in a document and we'll send the document back to you. With that being said, I want to move on to the next slide and I had a uh, I had prepared the video and when I played the video um, in a test run, the video sound didn't work. So that was awful. I couldn't play you the video and I really wanted to motivate you. But let's move on to the next slide. I think some of the final motivational thoughts from my side um, for all the attendees today is that with reference to COVID-19, I don't want to limit it to this pandemic. I think anything that comes our way um, from a humanity point of view, anything that challenges us as humans and the way that we've been doing things, we can choose how we respond as internal auditors from an organizational perspective. We can respond either positively or negatively, as you know. But I want you to know this, the only thing that we can decide on is how we're going to respond. You cannot change the circumstances. Your circumstances are there, it doesn't matter what happened. Whether government decides to change the doctor and regulations or not, we can't really change much of that. We can lobby, we can attempt, but the reality is, is you have to kind of accept your circumstances, but the way you respond to anything that you're in charge of. And are you going to respond positively or negatively? So um, that's what I want to ask you. And then the, the last thing there is, is, I just want to switch my video back on. I realized I've just switched my video off. Um, so the last thing that I, what I want to touch on is, I want you to know this. We have an opportunity to redefine internal auditing. We really can become providers of unique, future-orientated organizational insight that internal auditors were meant to be. I know the standards have been talking about providing organizational insight for quite some time. But I'm telling you, this COVID-19 related pandemic, the world of uncertainty that we're in now, really gives an opportunity to step up. If you can show senior management, your audit committee chair, that you use the different engagements that you've conducted, the consulting engagements, the assurance engagements, you take the results of those engagements, you do organizational research, you have a look at your sector, 
You look at how COVID-19 is impacting on your sector. You put all of this information together and you provide unique organizational insight, not general COVID-19 related news or general cyber related issues, unique insight to your specific organization. Then people will remember what you've done for them during these difficult times. Senior management will remember the role that internal order displayed in seeing this room. And that will, that will contribute to our evolution. And I'm making a statement. Richard Chambers talk about becoming a trusted advisor. I'm saying we can evolve. We can become a trusted advisor that evolved to become an organizational oracle. And you know what oracles do? Some people say they predict the future. I believe they just use data and information to predict a foreseeable future. And that's what we should do. We should be advising, we should be looking beyond the horizon as we've said in our standards before. And the critical thing that we need to do is, is we need to know our mission. We need to know what we want to achieve. You cannot achieve anything, whether it's personal or whether it's an internal audit objective, organizational strategy, you cannot know or achieve it if you don't know your mission and you don't embrace it. You need to know it and you need to believe in it. If you didn't buy into that mission statement of enhancing and protecting organizational value, you're in the wrong profession. Internal auditors are here to make our organizations better. We can make South Africa better. So we need to play our critical role that we were set to play. Then the other element that I want to focus on, you need to know the terrain. You need to be knowledgeable. We are in a difficult time. The reality is, is you can only see it through if you have information, if you're knowledgeable, and you are up to date. It doesn't help that you say, I'm knowledgeable and I've read and I know everything, but you're not staying abreast of developments. The video that I wanted to show you spoke, uh, had a few famous people in this, Rena Williams, a few tennis players, sports stars, actors, famous people. And it was interesting listening to Roger Federer in that video. We said, but if we continue to play tennis the way that he played tennis and didn't adjust his strategy and didn't do things differently and kept on training and training and working hard to adjust, his competitors would have outplayed him. But it's staying abreast of these developments and it requires hard work. I mean, the last point there, you need to work hard. I know it's, this goes without saying, but we need to work hard, especially now. Because if we don't work hard, there might not be a tomorrow. And then we need to work hard. And then if we think we work hard, we need to even work harder. And that's not a negative thing. I think we need to appreciate that we've got value to add, that we are in a unique position, that we can add value to our organizations and that we can share unique insights. We need to embrace this time and make it a time to evolve the internal audit profession and take it to the next level. And with that being said, let's go on to the next slide. I want to thank you for your time today. Um, it went far quicker than I anticipated. Although I couldn't see all the attendees, I had a look at some of the names and I know some of you personally and some of you very well. And to those that I don't know, thank you very much for attending the session today. I really appreciate it. And I hope that the session was of great value. Remember what I said, although I just touched on some of the standards and not all the standards, you need to go back and have a look at these standards, at, um, all the standards that are there. Consider these standards in context of COVID-19 and apply your mind and think whether you have uh, adequately uh, dealt with the matter and that you feel that your internal order department's house is in order and that you've considered all these standards and that you've considered the IPPA, the core principles, new mission statement, and that you're in a position to enhance and protect your organization's value, because that's why you are there. Please go out there in the world, hold the profession high, and play the critical role that you were, you were meant to play. And lastly, I just want to draw your attention to the slide. You'll see that we've got a link there. Um, we've developed the COVID-19 resources page. You're welcome to go and have a look at that resources page. There's a lot of COVID-19 resources there. We're continuously working on the page to make it nicer and to make it more comprehensive. But please visit the page. And again, thank you very much for your time today. 
I really appreciate it. Thank you.